Okay, so so, so today again, let's, so because again, we're going into systems of power and men who are in power <clears throat> today, societally privilege advantages we moved on from rights societally how do you make the argument you know like i said I, this is a change my mind effectively right now the idea mm -hmm. that we're taught in schools by you know gender studies professors um by far left progressive feminists this idea of privilege it's the word they use you know i know everyone has different words but yeah. it's the word that's used sure. when i was in college um when we had to read naomi wolf um examples of that today societally i, I would love to see some some concrete examples to see if we would agree or, or disagree yeah, I mean, uh, and I'm going to keep pushing on this. It's like the fact that men have been the ones in power. They are the ones who are able to dictate what is what is what is truly like. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm losing my train of thought right now because I understand what you're saying. But what I'm trying to explain to you is that these power positions influence our society today because well, you, you, certainly so they gave, do. Certainly, I agree. Of course, yeah. of course. Listen, your past, your past dictates a part of your present. But you know, listen. Again, we're going back to people in positions of power. They made men eligible for the draft and not women, right? They made men have yeah. mandatory bucket duty and not women. They made men an actual whipping post if they abuse their wives and not women. So you know, no one's perfect. And but if, we've and gotten if we better. Talk, and if we talk about patriarchy, you will hear a lot of feminists say that these patriarchal systems are also negative for men as well. We're not just saying like, we need to dismantle the patriarchy just because it's bad for women. It's bad for men too, for all of the reasons that you just agree, that you just talked about. So, so since you guys have had the benefit of being in power for centuries, that's the norm. And you and I know that it is very, very difficult to change the idea of what is normal, right? Like I, your producer and I were joking before I came on about the fact that you know, we, I have to have two different headphones, one for my computer and one for my iPhone, because when Apple changed their iPhone jack and got rid of it, people like went nuts. Right. And that's a small change, right? Because that's the norm. That's what you're used to. So if you are used to seeing men in power and if men are used to being in power, it's hard to kind of change that dynamic. And because of that, like, it, it, you just assume that men will be in power. It's an assumption. It's a systemic su assumption. It's something that people just assume is the norm. That is the norm. Someone once asked Ruth Gator ben, um, Bader Ginsburg, what is the, what would make you happy? Like how many women on the Supreme Court would make you happy? And she said all of them because there have been all men on the Supreme Court. So why shouldn't there be all women? Ah, see, that's where we differ. And that's where I think I think where we can come uh, come to our disagreement. Maybe later on we'll continue along this path is the solution. Uh, see, I think that's a horrible answer. I mean, I'm sure you can imagine why I would think that's the worst answer possible. Sure. I And I, I happen to agree with you. But the fact that all men is normal and all female is abnormal is the no but that's not why I'm talking that's not about. why i think it's bad i think it's bad because i am all about uh of course we've supported on this program equal opportunity what ginsburg is talking about there's equal outcome i couldn't care less it's not because there's normal or abnormal whether it's clarence thomas or ginsburg i couldn't care less i care about the most qualified person for the job i care Absolutely. about the constitutional scholar who will protect our rights i couldn't care less if they have a penis or a vagina and i think that's 100%. a big reason why young women and particularly young men the danger that we're seeing now reject this idea of feminism reject this idea of privilege and advantages because they see a lot of disadvantages that men experience not as a result of patriarchy but as a result of feminism because of that mindset that it's time to ensure equal outcomes, saying all women on the Supreme Court, listen, if you're a man today, if you're a 22 year old male, you go, hold on a second, everyone here has equal rights. And um, I don't want the Supreme Court to become an affirmative action land. But, and I completely agree with you, it should not be an affirmative action land. And the people who argue for against male privilege are not saying that you should give, um, positions to women simply because they're women. We just all want to be treated equally, and we're not really at this point. But if just you do that, you can't ensure an all-female Supreme Court. So you understand the subtext there. You can't. I do, 100%. 100%. I cannot guarantee an all-female Supreme Court. But what I, the reason why I brought that up to begin with sure. was to underline my, my argument that all, all male all the time is the norm. 
It's the norm. That's a hundred percent the norm. It's been the norm. For I would his, not like, agree. You just, I would not agree that, that all male, all norm. now, 100% is the norm. You had females in the Republican primary, and the Democratic national candidate was a female. I don't agree yeah, that it's 100% but... the norm. I just, I don't agree. I believe that it's actually probably uh, disproportionately not the norm. If you look at the amount of women who go into certain fields, and then you look at how many of them make it to the top, whether it's stand-up comedy or the field of sciences. I, I don't agree that in 2018 it's the norm to see 100% men. I think it's the norm no, now to I'm try and manipulate that the, the outcomes norm. that I'm there are saying... more women. Go ahead. I'm not saying that it is the norm. I'm saying that it's the uh, it's the assumption that that's what you're going to see. When people go to the doctor, they assume that it's a male doctor. When people go to um, a lawyer, they assume that it's going to be a male lawyer because these are fields that have been traditionally dominated by men. Um, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't yeah, agree. Are, I hate to. I don't agree right, with the premise. Like you don't. You don't have to agree with that. But it's I not mean, accurate. But... Like the medical field is a, it, like the legal field. Yes, let's do this. We have to agree on fundamental facts, right? Sure. Yes, most lawyers are men. We can get into why that's the case. But in the medical field, you have plenty of women. Obviously, people will argue many of them go into nursing, but you have plenty of female practitioners who are doctors. I've had female doctors yeah. myself. My wife has female doctors. I don't yeah. agree with the premise that it has been the norm for a long time, or certainly today, for you to expect a male doctor. I think you're seeing, you're seeing everything through the prism of gender here, and, and not through the prism of qualifications. I don't believe that most people go, oh, I ex if a woman walks into their office when they're on that deli paper saying, well, hold on a second, you have breasts? Oh, this is not what I signed up for. I don't think <laughs> anyone cares. I really don't. I'm not saying that they care. I'm not saying that they're going to like get up and storm out if a wo like if a woman walks in. I'm okay. just saying that there are certain things where you expect a man to show up. And I think that that's very represented in you could even look at our own government. Only 19% of the House of Representatives is female and there are only 21 female senators sitting at this moment. So, you know, that's not equal. That's not, you know, all women. It's mostly men. And I think and, that... And why do you think that, you know, ha over half the country are women? Why do you think that is? Why do you think women aren't voting in the women? Well, I think that we're not voting in the women just because they're women. I think that... You know, we I don't really want to get into the whole Trump Hillary thing. Hillary did win the popular vote. We don't have to get into all of that shit right now. You but can, we but... are voting in for we are voting in women. I think that traditionally women have not been pushed into or have not been motivated or have not even really been told that they can achieve situations like this because we and we can get into sexism with this now. Women who enter um, careers like politics who enter careers like anything where there's a high profile tend to be um, put through, like tend to be scrutinized a lot more than men. I think that's your view. And that's probably, well, and I, and I don't think, think that that's, and, I, and that's not statistically corroborated.